Today we're going to educate you on the topic of behavioral economic analysis. Behavioral economics is a method of economic analysis that applies psychological insights into human behavior to explain economic decision making. It can be used effectively to make you buy products you don't want, in quantities you don't need, at a price you probably can't afford to impress people you really don't like. While it's not actually this grim, it does have broad application in marketing to target consumers' irrational behaviors in order to achieve the desired outcome. For example, what deal are you more likely to respond to? Buy one, get one free, or buy two and get 50% off? They are actually the exact same deal, and yet most will often choose the first because people love the word free. Studies show the word free releases large quantities of dopamine in our brain to make us feel happy, and we end up responding irrationally. This is behavioral economics, behavior outside the rational expectations explained by classic economics. So how is it done? Psychological theories are applied to purchasing behaviors, and marketers use those theories in an effort to influence consumer behaviors. Now let's look at some examples. Starbucks uses a process called anchoring, the process of planting a thought in a person's mind that will later influence their actions, to convince people to buy a cup of coffee at a much higher price than competitors. Starbucks differentiates itself by a unique store appearance or fancy coffee names, neither of which affect the actual cup of coffee, but the association creates a higher willingness to pay for the same cup of coffee. Maybe you're thinking, I like Starbucks coffee better than Dunkin' Donuts because it tastes way better. You may be right, or maybe they've just effectively anchored you. Here are some other marketing applications. Suggesting something is in scarce supply makes us want it more. Remember Supreme? Sensory priming plays off the five senses, like playing music while you shop. A wine shop found that if they played French music, they sold more French wine, but when they played German music, they sold more German wine. Another method is to remove pain points or signposts. People don't like spending money, but they do like buying new things. And studies show that by removing the dollar sign on menus, for example, the uh, average spending increases by 12%. We also hate losing stuff. Loss aversion is almost two times as influential as possible gains. Losing $10 hurts a lot more than the pleasure of gaining $10. So why is behavioral economic analysis used and what sort of data can it produce? It's used because although a person might be expected to weigh the benefits and drawbacks and then choose the best possible option, behavioral economics demonstrates that people rarely behave in this manner. It assumes irrationality in decision making. Let's look at a few arguments that behavioral economists make against the standard economic model. Bounded rationality. Our rationality is limited to the environment of the decision. Ideally, we'd make the best decisions that are perfectly rational. However, experiments outside of a lab are always affected by the environment in which they are run. Self-control. Individuals in society lack self-control. Most of us, at some point, have eaten, drunk, or spent too much, and exercise saved or worked too little. Boundedly selfish. Most economic models assume people act in their own self-interest. However, research shows otherwise. For example, over 70% of all households give some amount to charity. Additional behavioral economics arguments include the following. Most of our choices are not the result of careful deliberation. We live in the moment. We tend to resist change, are poor predictors of future behavior, and are affected by physiological and emotional states. We are also social animals with social preferences and are susceptible to social norms. Marketers can use this knowledge of how people actually think and act to influence consumers' decisions. For example, an ad that plays to the emotions of the viewer can have a more powerful effect than an ad which simply explains what a product is and what its benefits are. Let's look at how it's applied in literature and in real life. Undergraduates check social media pages rather than take notes during lecture despite the resulting loss in knowledge acquisition and possible detriment to their chances of doing well in the class. Children choose a brownie over an apple in the lunch line despite the long-term health effects. Teachers and administrators deviate from empirically supported curricula to gain student approval or make lesson plans easier to implement, despite the loss in student learning and subsequent dips in evaluations of teaching efficacy. When presented with too many options, consumers can become overwhelmed, leading to unrealistic expectations, decision-making paralysis, and unhappiness. 
and this is called choice overload. In a study of jam purchases at a supermarket, shoppers were given samples and then presented with 6 or 12 different jam choices. 30% of those presented with 6 choices made a purchase, while only 3% of shoppers presented with 24 options made a purchase. Additionally, the shoppers who chose to buy from the selection of 6 jams reported greater satisfaction with their purchases, so offering fewer choices to consumers can increase sales and satisfaction. For another example, take an average trip to the grocery store. Most consumers spend no more than a few seconds considering each choice that they make. In so little time, there's no opportunity for the customer to crunch numbers and effectively analyze trade-offs. Rather, the more capricious customer decides what to take from the shelves based on subtle cues from the environment and the consumer's momentary mindset. Let's explore how behavioral economics is used looking specifically at social reinforcement and loss aversion. Social reinforcement is a commonly used practice that shows celebrities and or well-known companies that use a particular product or service. Examples include Colin Kaepernick with Nike, Steph Curry with Under Armour, displaying customer logos on your website, and using stats like 9 out of 10 people save money when they switch to our insurance company. These marketing campaigns carry social weight that can change how people buy your products. Nike has been very successful with this marketing approach, with a large portion of its customers making purchases because well-known athletes or celebrities promote the product. Loss aversion is another popular behavioral economic topic for marketers. As mentioned earlier, consumers hate losses twice as much as they enjoy gains. Framing marketing campaigns and materials in terms of a loss rather than gains can have a big impact. For example, a doctor's office gave patients nearly identical brochures on breast exams. The only difference was that one brochure emphasized the gains of the exam, while the other emphasized the negative outcomes of not performing the exam. Framing the exams in terms of loss led to greater action and more positive attitudes toward the exams. Loss aversion also shows up frequently in e-commerce with wording like buy in the next hour and save or only five of this item left. Consumers don't want to miss out on those opportunities. Now, while behavioral economics is definitely relevant in marketing, there are some caveats to consider. Privacy and advertising laws, especially those laws relating to storage and use of the information of certain consumers without their consent, could result in large fines and negative press, in addition to being illegal. Confirmation bias. This occurs when your team has a suspicion or indication of how to best influence a customer and performs research to confirm that suspicion. After the bias is confirmed, your team stops researching and believes that there is nothing else to be understood and moves forward with a false confidence. To combat this, organizations need to evaluate decision-making processes and use due diligence in performing their research efforts. There are also ethical issues to consider. Mainly, is it right to use psychological or neurological biases that cause people to make choices that seem contrary to their best interests? Marketing that uses tactics that prey on people's weaknesses can be said to unfairly influence people's decisions. These influences in marketing are often called nudges, and they receive a fair amount of criticism, claiming they take away some level of consumers' freedom of choice. Let's consider the arguments of it being ethical or unethical. On the ethical side, all marketing is used to steer people to make decisions. Using behavioral economics is no different from any other marketing tactics in that way. No decisions are completely neutral. People have already been influenced in regards to their purchase decisions. This is just one more tactic that is used. People's ability to reflect on their actions and expectations of commercial self-interest in the marketplace makes them sufficiently vigilant to control and correct their choices. On the unethical side, using behavioral economics to influence consumers away from value-maximizing activities. For example, companies have been accused of using behavioral economics to influence people to make decisions that are somewhat are somehow harmful to them. Whether it's spending money that they don't have to spend on something that is not going to help them in the way that they think it will, or physically hurting them by getting them to use a product that will harm them without informing them of the potential harm. For example, Nestle made mothers in developing countries think that their baby formula was healthier for babies than breast milk by presenting misleading marketing, and it, it uh, in the end caused many infant deaths. Companies need to act responsibly and ethically in their marketing efforts in the interest of their customers. Let's summarize behavioral economics by explaining what it is, why to use it, and why not to use it. 
what it is. Behavioral economics are the hidden forces used in marketing to shape our decisions. It uses psychological and neurological biases and tricks like anchoring to influence the purchase decisions of consumers. In the field of marketing research, you can learn what will drive emotional and irrational responses from consumers that could be used to drive them to buy your product. Why use it? It can be useful to have research that indicates what would drive consumers to have an emotional response that would lead to the purchase of your product. You could then execute some level of nudge on that influence. Having an understanding of what will cause a reaction for buyers can allow you to understand where to steer your marketing. Why not to use it? Nudges can range in their influence, but marketers need to be cautioned when executing nudges so that they do not become unethical or unlawful. Privacy and advertising laws protect consumers from marketing that is untrue or using personal information. Additionally, it is important not to violate the freedom of decision making. Economic behavioral analysis can be effective be an effective marketing tactic so long as it is kept within legal and ethical bounds.